Are you ready to get the Hydrafacial Glow? Loved in 87 countries across the world. It's not a facial, it's a Hydrafacial. Now available across the UK. Visit hydrafacial.co.uk to find your nearest location. I felt so privileged to be part of this experience and this yeah. journey. And I think anybody watching this show will really learn something from it, but also, you know, it made me want to go out there and do something about it. Good afternoon. <laughs> oh, good afternoon to you too. I'm picking. So hello, lovely hello, hello, you, hello everyone. Darling. So lovely Did to Harriet you. not arrive back? Did, what happened? Did she fly in and the plane didn't reach England? What happened? She flew oh, International Wonderbirds are now back to being ordinary national Wonderbirds, and we are joined by our lovely friend, Vicky Michelle. Hello, darling. Hello, hello, Hi. everyone. Lovely to Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> you all look fabulous. Aww. You do, you do, too. always, darling, always. Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. I, I'm, I think that Dee and uh, Vicky got the red memo. I got the black yes. memo. And I've got the glittery memo. I love <laughs> it. It is lovely. <laughs> They're Keelys, so, uh, aren't they? I live next to a canal and I had, uh, there were two swans, a lady and a man, and they had five babies, five cygnets, and they grew and they grew and they grew and they started to get white bottoms. So that meant they were becoming swans. Anyway. The other day I looked out and mommy and daddy had come back and the cygnets had flown away oh. and left home. Anyway, I'm telling you this because yesterday a lone cygnet came back oh. on its own, still only a white bottom though, not a fully fledged one. And it was on its own outside, just here. Oh. And I felt really, it was just awful because there was no mum and dad, there were no siblings, just this one signet just sitting there looking around as much as say, where's everybody gone? Oh. <laughs> we get very happen? attached to the ducks and the swans. Yeah, but it's lovely. I go feeding the ducks and the swans and I think it's lovely. And oh, it's, it's, and so it's, uh, it's quite a hard life on, on a canal. You know, they, yeah. you know, they, the male ducks, you know what they do to female ducks. Yeah, they don't stand up mm. those females. Oh, but know. did you know, did, did you know, Sherry, that actually swans mate for life? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. And so, but this signa obviously hasn't got a mate left now. He hasn't no. got a friend. Oh. No, he'll so, find one. I know he will, but he's yeah. got to turn white first, hasn't he? This Absolutely. is a problem. He'll become a bit more handsome. <laughs> yeah, a bit more. Oh. <laughs> He'll be fine, what Sherry, but if you talk to him, him, look after Yes, that's it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anyway. I thought that was almost oh, a fairy story, Sherry. <laughs> it, is so a fairy. <laughs> it is a fairy story, but I'm, I'm waiting for him to come back because I want to go and say it's okay. Happy ending. Oh. <laughs> it's okay. You're gonna, And it's going to turn whiter and whiter as the mm. next few months go on. It's fascinating, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then he will say, I am a swan. Yes, all right. <laughs> yes, darling. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to introduce our guest, who I just <laughs> think is one of the most inspirational women we have in this country, in the UK. I just think she's amazing. Please come in, Jacqueline Gold. There she is. Hey! Hello, Jacqueline. Hey! Hi. 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 Great to see you. Welcome. Welcome. And thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really looking forward to it. And how are you, Jacqueline, in this no, strange I'm... world? <laughs> yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. I adapt very easily to these type of challenges. Yes. <laughs> well, I think women do. And that's what, mm -hmm. you know, why we're all here and still here. And I, I just think we do. I think we have to. But I, I, I love your story. It's amazing. And we've met before and I've always been fascinated by your career and inspired by you. And I, but my thing, I was reading something about you last night and I thought when you first started and your father was part of all this and you say something about it was a man's world and how, how different it was then, your industry and how it was run. And now it must be very different. But has do you think in those years gone by that women's attitude or the attitude to women has changed greatly? 
Yes, absolutely, Sherry. I mean, you know, when I look back and I've I've been in, in running this business now for 40 years, um, it was incredibly different. I mean, I certainly, I was there working for work experience. I actually had no intention of staying because it was a very male dominated, yeah. uh, uncomfortable, awkward, you know, place to work. You'd go into the the stores and there were a couple of stores at the time which were you know it was the raincoat brigade that that went in them <laughs> and uh, and and it was very uncomfortable for women to be in there um but women did want to be able to spice up their sex lives they wanted to be able to buy sex toys and sexy underwear and you, you know you have to remember you couldn't buy sexy underwear in the high street like you can today I mean, it just wasn't available. And it was men that was designing it. It was all sort of, um, you know, nylon, see-through baby dolls with harsh red lace edging, oh, you can imagine. So there was such an opportunity to completely change this and do something different and empower women. And I guess what I'm so proud of, and it has taken a number of years, is that, you know, I, I've really driven a, a culture change um, yes, because yeah. there was nothing like it and people's attitudes have changed women's attitudes women are empowered now and um you know I remember when we started the parties and you know men were like you know what goes on at those parties and there was really this sort of you know they were quite um uh, unhappy about it because women were suddenly you know in in a room full of women talking about their sex lives and um trying things on and choosing things and just being empowered and I'm, I'm really really proud of that it is because you made it okay you made it you know into a world of it, what what is wrong with this there's nothing wrong with it whereas in a man's world it became a little bit undercover and we, we don't talk about it and women mustn't mention it and but you made you you gave such power to women and now we have a whole world full of, you know, now we have Me Too, of course, and we have all, all the strengths of, that women can have. And you did that. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting when you talk about Me Too and, and, and all of those things, because it's so important. You know, women um, were not in control of their sex lives at that time. Um, you know, you hear comments like, uh, you know, lie back and think of England. I mean, yes. it's crazy. <laughs> I, I remember when I took my idea to the board and one board member, you know, he stood up, threw his pen down on the table and said, well, this isn't going to work, is it? Women aren't even interested in sex, oh. <laughs> which was crazy. It was absolutely crazy. But that was the perception then. It was, you know, it's uh, all because women weren't empowered and then when we started to empower them you know there was resistance from men because they felt out yeah. of control um and uh, yeah it, it it's i mean i you know had so many challenges from landlords not allowed allowing me to open stores i mean i had a bullet through the post when i tried oh. to open a store in yeah in dublin um and all i was trying to do was empower women in the bedroom now I might be talking rubbish here, but didn't Marks and Spencers never sell black underwear until? I don't think they sold black underwear. Well, there there are a I lot mean, of for a long time of changes took place once we, you know, I mean we were growing at twenty percent a year, so we sort of exploded onto the high street really, yeah. um, and and into women's lives and. Um, you know, yes, the, we drove change. You know, Marks and Spencers, obviously, they've changed their collections considerably. And you look at even, even Cosmopolitan, the conversations that were on their front covers and their strap lines changed because this is what women wanted to talk about. Yes. Um, and they wanted to be able to buy their own underwear and their own sex toys. How old were you at this time? Jacqueline, when you did this? I was 21. Wow. So yeah, wow. it's so revolutionary for such a young woman to have such an insight as well. I mean, you know, you changed lives, you know, you changed the sex life of your mother, I'm sure, as well. I mean, every, <laughs> everybody, because, yes. you know, I grew up in the same era and, and it was, I, I remember these parties and they were so much fun. They were hilarious. Yeah. And, you know, and I remember, you talk about changing lives. I remember going into the Loose Women, on Loose Women, actually, which I've done a few times, and it wasn't you, Sherry, but 
one of the um, one of the presenters actually said to me, I conceived my second child wearing your nurse's outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I know who that was. <laughs> it, it's amazing how many people come up and tell you those sort of, uh, those little yeah. stories. I, I must admit quite... that um, I've used them um, in plays and things. The last one was Hormonal Housewives. And there was always, so, you know, we, we talked about Rampant Rabbit. I mean, he is famous you know, and uh, sex toys and everything. And they're used in theatre. I mean, it's it's all of a sudden it became quite normal to use, uh, you know, all of these sex toys on stage as well. Well, I've got That's to tell really you a story about the rabbit because he, you're right, uh, Vicky, he's a legend, isn't he? He's a legend. <laughs> Yes. I, I took one from the show. <laughs> <laughs> I was in, I was uh, in the hairdressers. This is a number of years ago, and there was a very very famous, uh, and she still is very famous, fifty uh, something pr presenter, gorgeous, gorgeous. Um, I won't say her name because I don't want to embarrass her. But uh. she um, she she came over to me and said, "I I have to have a rabbit. I have to have a rabbit." And I said to her. <laughs> Don't worry, don't worry, I'll, I'll get you one. And uh, we both shared the same hairdresser. So I said to uh, Lino, our joint hairdresser, I will, can I send it to you and, and you can pass it on to her, which he did. And then several weeks passed and uh, I went back into the hairdressers to have my top up. And um, he just turned around to me out of the blue and said, less than a minute. And I'm like, <laughs> Sorry, he said less than a minute, and then I thought, oh yes, I know exactly <laughs> what you're saying. <laughs> so I, I, want to, I want to take you. I want to ask you about something completely different. You have been doing now this wonderful documentary for BBC Two, Womanhood. Can you tell us about it, please? Oh, thank you so much for asking, because this is going to be phenomenal. Um, yeah. The BBC, BBC Two, actually, and it airs uh, this Friday at nine pm. Um, the Friday the 26th and uh, the BBC pulled together six well-known women from all different backgrounds and we lived in a house together in Leeds for two weeks wow. um, and it was myself, uh, Shirley Ballis of course from Strictly, Sunita, Kirsty Walk, uh, Chidera and also Susie Susie Ruffle, the comedian. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, what an amazing bunch yeah. of girls. We absolutely loved each other, but we had this amazing task and we were set these activities every day. I mean, it was incredible. I mean, we, we did uh, all sorts of things and it was all about exploring how far um, women had come over the last 50 years because, you know, um, society and, uh, you know, various different organisation, women's liberation, they said that things were going to change and, you know, uh, it was going to change. We went on a march with, um, you know, Reclaim the Night. I don't know if you remember that on the back of yeah. um, uh, the, York, the Yorkshire Ripper. And we um, we met with the women that threw flower of Bob Hope at the oh, old yes. during the oh uh, Miss World oh. contest. I mean, they're in their eighties now. I mean, they're yeah, of course. Wow. amazing. Um, we saw labiaplasty taking place. Oh, wow. Um, wow. We yeah. saw girls 19 years old having lip filler, which was, you know, uh, Susie and I, we went and had a lap dance and, and we met <laughs> with, uh, we met with sex workers and they all, um, you know it was shocking it was inspirational it was emotional we also shared our own experiences in life uh, and I guess one of the things that inspired me the most was actually we went to a university and we talked about we had a workshop on consent and I have a 12 year old daughter and it shocked me that many of these students went to university expecting to be assaulted and <gasps> most recently a friend of mine her daughter at university was actually um, drugged in a, in a nightclub with, with needle injection. And, you know, I as a, a, a well, I'm 61 now, but I go as a mother going, you know, I thought I knew everything, you know, the business I run yeah. and the experiences I have and the people I talk to. And there's things in this day and age, whether it be the things I've explained or maybe what goes on on social media, it's really scary and um, I felt so privileged to be part of this experience and this yeah. journey and 
I think anybody watching this show will really learn something from it, but also, you know, it made me want to go out there and do something about it. Uh, you know, it, it, it's made me want to champion different, there was different things, particularly the university. You know, I think there's still so much education that needs to take place with our, you know, our, our, um, Young our kids and, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, I want to get into schools and talk to How different many episodes? Yeah. Yes. How many episodes did you do, Jackie? Oh, we just did. The, we were going to do two episodes, yeah. but they felt it was so powerful. They wanted to do just one episode. One. It's an hour and a half. Yeah. It's on at nine o'clock. Right. Um, it's, it's called Womanhood. I'm sure, you know, what I want, in fact, what we all want is from re some really serious conversations coming out of this. Yeah. Um, and yeah. hopefully, you know, we'll be carrying on having these conversations maybe we'll do another podcast about it or something but yeah great to have uh, people and uh, loose I mean it's so loose women isn't it just having yeah. these conversations and talking about you know how we can make how we can make changes and how we as women can influence mm. change if, if we that's Jackie, brilliant we've, we've progressed so much and yeah. you know in terms of business and everything why haven't we progressed so much to stop things like genital mutilation and things like that in this country, mm -hmm. or, you know, taking control of how you stop, you know, uh, people mm -hmm. injecting um, substances into strangers. You know, um, it, 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 it beggars belief that we've come so far and yeah. yet not with controlling those sort of issues. I, I totally agree. And I think it's a really yeah. important question to ask. And Absolutely. You know, from my, from my experience, I would say, I would say there's two things. I, um, and, and don't get me wrong, I love men, but men play a part. You know, mm -hmm. men could live in our shoes and experience what we experience for just a week. I think they'd be horrified. Um, and I think there's a big piece around education. You know, yeah. a lot of this behaviour is being. Um, triggered by uh, de online dating culture, university culture. Um, Pornograph pornography. Pornography culture, yeah. absolutely. You know, when you talk about the labiaplasty, you know, it's women wanting to look like, uh, you know, porn models. You know, that's crazy. Absolutely. It's absolutely crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I also think women as well play a part in just putting up with it. You know, we talk to a lot of women in, uh, you know, on a girl's night out in Leeds, you know, they're in one way, they're, you know, wearing dresses that literally just cover their knickers because they want to, you know, attract Impressed. men, you know, but then on the other hand, they will not go out unless they're with a friend. It can be intimidating. And I just don't, you know, men might think they're making compliments, but actually it can be. It can be very intimidating. Um, so, yeah, you know, and the the stats of of you know assault, nine, something like ninety five percent. They're usually people you know. I think the whilst awful, the the Sarah Everard examples are actually very very rare. Um, and actually, you know, just and also educating women on what constitutes yeah. as rape. Yeah. You know, and I think we don't report. And then we know that only 2% get convicted. They're, this isn't acceptable. It's just not good enough. Perhaps it's us as mothers, you know, maybe us as mothers as well, mothers to sons. Yeah. I'm not a, I've got daughters. Um, I think we've all got daughters, actually. Um, mm -hmm. All of us, actually. Every yeah. single one of us here have got daughters. But I think as a mother of a son, I mean, my daughter's friends, I mean, she's in her early 30s now, are all fabulous boys. They really are lovely boys. They're respectful, they're nice, and they're kind. I'm not saying that they're all saints, but th they are much, much more respectful. So I wonder if our generation of women have brought up more respectful boys. I absolutely agree, because when, we, when, we, when our kids go out, we say to our boys, behave, and we say to our girls, be safe. Yes. You know, so, um, you know, that sort of, again, we take those sort of comments for granted. But I think I'd like to see more education as well at school, but at senior school. And I think it needs to be much more, not beating around the bush, but, you know. Let, you know. I actually think, though, Jackson, I think it starts earlier than that. I think of education 
can start very early about boys and girls, even in the playground, playing together, respecting, you know, the, each other. And, and I think that starts early. And if it comes in early and mm. a discussion and a debate starts early about, you know, exactly as it does with bullying at school, Mm. This is where it should start and respecting each other. And it should start very young. I mean, I've got a, one of my granddaughters is 11. And, you know, and I, when you see them in the playground and the difference between the boys and girls and how they play, you know, I think that should start in school, that debate. Do, you do know, you know, and it should that, be something they talk about. I, I, I do agree with you, Sherry. I also think there's something, there's a role for fathers to play here as well. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, um, you know, obviously showing their wives respect. And I think as well, um, you know, their throwaway comments can sometimes be taken the wrong way. I, I have a, a, a lovely friend who was talking about his, um, his young son uh, and had a play date over. I think the, the boy and the girl were only uh, about 10 at the time, so completely innocent. And he went up to check in their room to see uh, if everything was okay. And they'd both stripped off naked and were dancing around the bedroom, which obviously we know kids sometimes do. But it was when he said, oh, that's my boy. You know, <gasps> that's the type of comment that it might, you oh, know, no. seem harmless, but actually Terrible. can be interpreted completely wrong. No. Oh, yeah, no. yeah. But Jackie, I was going to say to you, actually, um, my question was, well, what are you going to be doing next? But I no now know what you're doing next. You've already said that to us. Yeah. But I would I, love to say to you, we would love to help you with this. We've got a platform here. And I'd, I'd love to, and I know everyone here would, will say the same. We'd love you to come on and talk about this. So we actually, we keep getting the message out to everyone because it's such an important thing. I mean, I've done a lot of work um, with women in the workplace and bullying. And, and it's still, you know, like the glass ceiling at 35, a lot of women leave the boardroom because they, they're intimidated or, you know, they don't have the support. And I think we really need to talk about this more. And I, we'd love you to come back on. Thank you, Dee. I really, really appreciate that because you can probably tell how passionate, how passionate I am. Absolutely. Absolutely. I've, I've always been championing women, you know, in the boardroom and in the bedroom, but this is something you know, this is another step forward and I, I just feel so passionate about it. And I'm so glad that the BBC, you know, have done this programme. And then there needs to be a, you know, a, a, there probably needs to be a follow up because I think it is going to create so much debate. Absolutely. BBC Two, BBC. nine o'clock, Womanhood, Friday the 26th. I remember a couple of years ago when we were celebrating the 100 years of the suffragettes and yeah. the... Um, I think it was Sky News, we're, we're doing some Vox Pots with people and, and interviewing people. Uh, and so many people were saying, oh yes, you know, I think job's done. Uh, it so isn't done. Job is so not done. Not done. Uh, when you think that the Equal Pay uh, Act was brought in 40 years ago and we still don't have equal pay. No. You know, that's a, that's a law. You know, exactly. there are companies breaking the law. Um, I know. I do remember being in the theatre job in the West End, and I won't say who the producer was. And I remember finding out that the two guys above me were on double what I was on. And I remember asking the producer, and, say, and that's not, it's not hundreds of years ago. It's about 20 years ago, maybe 15. And, and I said to him, why are they getting more than me? He said, I don't even understand the question. <laughs> I said, can you just tell, I'm just saying, I get half, he went, yeah, because you're a woman. Why would why would you get the same as Emma? I was so gobsmacked, I actually couldn't go on with the conversation because he was just so unbelieving of me that I would even say that. It's unreal, I, isn't it? It is. I mean, the Queen. I think the Queen is an incredible example of of power and to help. You know, I know you've got a CBE, haven't you? I have. I have, uh, and. You know, I, just to touch on that, that's the proudest moment of my life. As I'm oh. sure it was with, perhaps for Vicky, but, no. you know, to be recognised yeah. for the things that you feel yeah. most passionate about. Yeah. Um, and for me, actually, I was recognised for entrepreneurship 
uh, women in business and also social enterprise. Uh, it was just incredible because I had, obviously I have been on such a, a journey. I mean, I've been arrested twice as, <laughs> as well as the bullet through the post and I've taken the government to, to the court uh, in the past. So when you've been on that very challenging journey and then all of a sudden, you know, somebody at that, well, what level can you get higher than that? But when, you know, some the queen, uh, you know, recognises you for, you know, everything, it, it just changes and you just feel so proud and um, it just makes all that effort so worthwhile. Did you have the Queen, Jackie? Did, did the Queen... I didn't that? actually, no, oh. I had uh, Princess Anne. All oh, right, she's um, great. Oh. Who's a great royal and oh. uh, it was at uh, Windsor Castle. So, yeah. and I also talk, took my seven-year-old daughter with me. Oh. Uh, and I, I've done that before, you know, when I, in the past, when I did public speaking, I remember taking Scarlett to one of my speeches when I when she was five years old and usually it's to met you know audience of men if it's a corporate event but I wanted her to see mummy on stage and actually think you know this is normal this is something that I could be doing or you know yeah that, inspiring yeah. The same with, yeah with my CBE you know you want I think it's so important to do that every now and again with with your kids because it definitely it, it, well, you, yeah you're yeah. certainly a great role model for your daughter yeah. Oh, Jackie. thank you, Dave. I took really my daughter awesome. with me, Jackie, and my mom, and it was such a proud moment for them. Oh, and I got oh. into charity work, but I remember, you know, mummy's mummy sadly isn't with us anymore. But uh, her face and Louise, they were so proud, and it's, it's such a momentous occasion. Did you have to go through the the legalities? You have to curse. Yes, yes. And, and it's All very formal, and you have to stand in a certain place, yeah. be, <laughs> position yourself in a certain way. It was. Yes, uh, yes. Oh. Yeah, it was um, it, fabulous. It, it was a great experience. I'm, I'm guessing that for you, your yours was to do with acting, was it? Well, charity. It was a lot oh, of charity work. So, so as I well, well, I've always thought always give back. So you know, whenever I'm not working, I would do charity work. So and and I got rec I didn't expect to get recognised for it. I just did it because you know I think you know that I believe in so many different things, whether it be people or animals or whatever. But um, so it was, you know, <clears throat> such a, a great um, humbling experience, really, to be recognized for that. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't something I sought after, but, um, and I, I had the queen and I remember looking at her and, and they video you. Have you got the video, Jackie? Oh, they, have I? I no, they send you this video. You can get this video so they film you. Oh wow! I'll have to. And uh, my face is like. Look into that. It's like the, <laughs> it's like the, I'm looking at the Queen, and I'm like in adulation. It's like it's yeah. like. Oh. oh my goodness! So um, I am lucky to have met the Queen though, because oh. um, in 2004, I think it was, I was recognised along with two other, uh, 200 other amazing women in business. Uh, it was a a one-off event at the palace, and they had all the female members of the royal family. Okay. um and oh. uh yes we all we all met them and it was that that was nice i'd like to to have seen it done every year but yes. um but it was it was a great event and, and well, we'd yeah. like to now ask you something the biggest honor that you probably ever have had <laughs> would you like to be an honorary wonderbird you uh -huh. it doesn't happen to me <laughs> uh -huh. oh wow it sounds amazing <laughs> absolutely <laughs> 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 We'd love that, Jackie. We really I mean, would. Forget about the CBEs. Even even a Damehood is not as <laughs> as an honorary Wonderbird. Absolutely, <laughs> I totally agree. <laughs> Who really? wouldn't want to be one? <laughs> oh, thank you, you so been, much. You've been the most amazing guest. Really amazing. Oh. Will you come back and see us, please? Because I think we should carry on this conversation. I'd and, love and to. Bring it. Have to. I would love to, and you've been a real joy. I've really enjoyed it. Thank you oh, so good. much. Oh, good. Well, so have Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jacqueline. Thank you. Bye. 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 Wow. Inspirational. Oh, what a lady. Uh, yes, absolutely. And I think it's really important we keep talking about this because, you know, um, well, I'm fighting something, as you know, anyway, which we won't talk about at the moment, but um, I think it's very, very important to carry yeah. on. Yeah, it is. And we will. We will be back on Friday, uh, whereas um, Vicky is with us this week. So it's so lovely to have you here, Vicky. Thank you, Thank you so much. We love you. And oh, we I love you all. Help.